Chances are that you've clicked on this video because you're a guitar player and you would love to know the mystical secrets of how to turn your guitar playing into a career. Now, I'm not saying that going down to the crossroads armed with your guitar and some kick-ass blues songs won't help, but if you're serious about making money with your guitar, then it seems you might be better off relying on some clever decision-making, taking risks, and some good old-fashioned hard work. You may be thinking, yeah, Andy, that's all well and good, but how do I do that? Well, this is the first in a series of chats where I look behind the scenes of the businesses and lives of the people who have transformed guitar playing into a job. Everyone I talk to in this series is somehow making money with guitars. And in these videos, not only do they explain how they do it, they give some great tips on how you can do it too. Up first is David Wallerman, a 42-year-old guitar teacher living in Colorado, USA. So let's move over to the chat and find out how David makes money with guitars. Hey everybody, welcome to Making Money With Guitars, and I'm lucky enough today to be joined by Mr. David Wallerman. Hey, David. Hey, Andy. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. Seriously, thank you for joining me. I am a big fan, firstly, and um, I love what you do, and I've learned from what you do, so there's a real genuine reason we're talking today. And thank you. Um, the way that you make money with guitars is you are an online guitar teacher, right? Yeah, I, I think you could say that. It encompasses a lot of hats and jobs but yeah sure. i think that's that's what i usually tell people i'm an online guitar educator <laughs> sounds, well, that sounds so much better that sounds so much better online guitar educator <laughs> i apologize yeah oh no, uh, no that's all right <laughs> <laughs> well before we start getting to depth i'm going to run a few videos of what david does in case you for some reason haven't seen david's work this is what david's videos look like who said you can't sweep pentatonic skills you can <laughs> Magic will happen. We really have five notes. One, two, three, four, five. Repeat it over and over. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. But now I'm in the first slice. So that's uh, some of the stuff from David. And what you can see firstly is the videos look and sound superb. And one of the first things I want to talk to you about, David, is how important is an audiovisual aspect to what you do? And how much does it contribute to being the guy that people choose to learn from? I think, I think it definitely has its importance, uh, but it didn't start like that at all because I've been, I think I've been on YouTube for 11, 12 years. And the first video, I don't know what you just showed, hopefully not the first ones, but there's it, definitely something a recent, progression. Yeah. It's <laughs> okay. the same room that you're in currently. Okay, yeah. And yeah, the, the older videos from 10 years ago had nothing to do with that. But I think it, it kind of gradually had to adapt because at the time, there was really not many people making YouTube videos as a profession. Mm -hmm. And when people started getting into it, the, the quality kept going up and up and up, which is great. So it kind of forced me to adapt. So I think it's important now, uh, just because you want to be somewhat relevant with what other creators are doing. So I think it has its importance, but there's always a balance between quality of production, which you, you can go down that road and, and road and spend hours on that, but also deliver, try to deliver something that is educational and mm -hmm. that's really not lose sight of that too, so. Thanks, the reason I touched on that first, and it's possibly one of the least important, but also important things that you have to do as a guitar teacher. Um, because if you're not up to scratch with, if it doesn't look nice and sound nice, then people are gonna click away, I guess. I think so, yeah. But also, probably content is king. And if you weren't a good teacher that could you know, grab that attention and put over your thing simply, then they also wouldn't stay. Absolutely. So yeah, I wanted content to get, is first. Yeah, yes. I wanted to get the gear thing out of the way first, just because yeah. anyone watching this might be thinking, I think I'm a good teacher, but maybe I haven't got a good enough camera or blah, 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 blah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think content w really will win, for sure. Absolutely. So talking about your content, um, we recently spoke about, a, uh, you do free YouTube stuff and you do uh, selling courses as well. Yeah. And you, you put out a, a YouTube video recently about making yourself a better, I think it was, I'm not sure the title was, but it was about um, improving your blues playing and making it sound, uh, I don't, don't want to say better, but more intelligent, you know, more interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think it, I know which one you're talking about. It floored me because... 
Um, I'm a self-taught person. And I've picked up things from teachers like yourself for many years, and I've been playing the pentatonic scale like every guitar player since you know pretty much day one, and haven't really ventured much out of that pentatonic scale, if I'm honest. And in un I think under six minutes, you taught me a new string to my bow, and it's just the simplicity of which you did that. And it's awesome. Yeah. So, firstly, you know, props <laughs> to you. Thank you so much for doing that. But compliments out of the way, is that like the most important thing you do is to get these concepts over in a simple way? Is that, is that kind of a, a secret to your success? I don't know if it's a secret to the success, but it's definitely intentional because that's how mm -hmm. I learn. Um, I like having like simple ideas that, that I personally can take and apply and discover new things. That's kind of the what I would like to do with other players. They take that little nugget of thing and they play, but out of that, there's all these other things that they can explore and discover on their own. Because I think if you discover something on your own, that's where it really resonates with you and it sticks and, and you can make it your own too, which is, I think, a big thing with what I try to do. Because that's what I enjoy about, about music, so. Absolutely. Yeah. And what kind of feedback do you get from people, like comments in your videos, and also you must have like an emailing, mailing list. Is it positive stuff? What's, what's it like? It's all negative, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> no, people have been very, very kind over the years. So I've gotten good comments, thankfully, and I'm very, very thankful for, for everyone out there. I'll always get some negatives too, but that's, the that's nature. part of the game. <laughs> But I think the thing is, people like yourself, um, are, I think everybody, it's, it's an ecosystem in the guitar world and we are all sort of um, symbiotic. However, people like you have a big responsibility because you're um, helping people further their guitar so then they might buy some more pedals, so they might watch one of my gear demos or something. But also yeah. you're, you're bringing in new players as well. Um, so it, it's, it must be, at first it must be a joy, but it's also a responsibility because people do get scared off if they see something too complicated. And that's one of the things that scared me when I first learned, was like, I will never be able to do that. But watching guys like yourself, it, it's, it, it makes it seem achievable. Does that something well, that brings, brings to you? That's, that's definitely the purpose behind it. That's, that's the hope. Um, but there's also, you know, I, I fully realize that my way of teaching is not for everybody either. And that's great because I think I would encourage people who want to learn or, or pursue or develop even further to just try different teachers, whether it's online teachers, free content on YouTube or one-on-one. -on -one. Don't just settle for the first one that you find. Mm -hmm. Find the person that you can resonate with because really that's the most important thing. You can only, there's only, well, there's an infinite things you can learn on the instrument, but teaching chords, well, a chord is a chord. Right, mm -hmm. a pentatonic scale is a pentatonic scale, and that actually slowed me down. For I think for anybody who has an interest in maybe pursuing this online education thing, when I started, I procrastinated for a long time because I thought, um, "What do I have to bring?" You know, I there are millions of guitar teachers online, and we were talking about uh, Rob earlier, Rob Chappers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, about ten years ago, I Rob was. I guess one of the only guys doing, you know, this guitar thing online. And I had a chat with him and we met, became friends ever since. And <coughs> the most me. powerful thing that I've ever heard that really started my career was from Rob. And he told me, I, I told him about my fears about starting a channel. Well, there's so, there's a lot of competition. He told me really, there's only one you. And that just resonated so much. And ever since I've been kind of at peace with that thing. Um, and I'm okay teaching, you know, the billionth pentatonic scale <laughs> online because <laughs> I haven't done it before. So <laughs> um, I can't remember what your question was, but hopefully it, it, it's relevant. I'm not even sure there was a question, but I enjoyed every second. Okay, <laughs> okay great. <laughs> yeah, um, it definitely answered some things that I think people might be looking for watching this video. So whatever the question was, I think you answered it. Good. <laughs> So I, I think he's absolutely right. And it's something I went through as well as, as a, I'm a fairly new YouTuber in the sense that I've been running the channel for about three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And um, I've done other things with stuff before then. Again, trying to make money, 
while there's a guitar near me. And it's not about being rich or being, you know, this, the stereotypical rich, but it's about having a living to support me, my family, and some extra stuff, and always be near a guitar, you know? That's, that's the dream for me. Yeah. And I'm, it's kind of happening, you know? It's, it's, it's a fight, and it's hard, but I love it. And whether I'm out gigging, and, or I'm here in the studio doing work, or I'm out working for whoever's hired me for the day, I, I count my blessings every time I can say, I'm getting paid, and there's a guitar in my hands. I know, it's amazing. Yeah. So that's not meant as a boast. It's meant to hopefully inspire some people that are watching this, that it is possible. And the you being you, is it Dr. Seuss? There's no one youer than you? It, if it's not, it should be. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is. We're, we're into the cat in the hat at the moment here in my family. So it's, it's yeah. something there. <laughs> um, yeah. Back to Rob. He's, he's absolutely right. And there's no, there's no one like Rob Chapman as well, except for Rob Chapman. <laughs> that's, that's exactly it, yeah. To move on yeah. from YouTube and for the, for the money-making aspect of this video, how do you, and I don't give away any secrets, but how do you make that a business? Because I know that YouTube doesn't pay well for advertising, which people do think. So people think you get a hit video and you get a million views on your video and suddenly you're buying a new car. And that's not the way the world works. No. So how, have you, how, are, you, how are you using YouTube to make your career in guitar? Yeah, so, so it's always evolving. That's one thing I want to get out of the way. What I do today might not be completely relevant in two months. But there, there are trends, though, or there's like similarities between in the last, or not between, in the last six, seven years. So basically, to simplify, I use YouTube, and, and we're only talking business here. We're not talking about it's fun to have interaction. It is, it really is. But purely business, I use YouTube as this big advertisement platform. And the way to, I, I don't like talking about business because all my viewers are friends, really. But that's what we're talking about. I but use you it have as to this, pay the bills, okay? So people should absolutely. understand that you are friendly. Oh, yeah. We'll get that. That's, that's already done. But yeah. I want to know how <laughs> do you put food on the table by putting videos yep. on YouTube? So the YouTubes that I do are many advertisements. Mm -hmm. With every video that I do, there is a download. People could download a backing track, a PDF, whatever, something like that. In order to download that, they give me their email. And email is still today the most powerful thing that I've found to sell, to sell products. There mm -hmm. might be others, but for me, that's been really the biggest game changer. Um, so once I have their email, it's kind of like little steps. So the first step is someone who never um, watched the David Wallman video will watch one video. Then he might watch a second one. So that's a little commitment, micro commitment from the viewer to decide to click another, another video. After five, six, the relationship kind of establishes and he might go a little bit further by downloading one of those things. And now I have the email. So now we're no longer just, we don't longer have this viewer-producer relationship. We have this, uh, this trust act because someone gave me the email. Uh, then I abuse that. No, no. <laughs> no then, then you <laughs> once sell I that email. <laughs> once I have the email, I will continue furthering, it, furthering that relationship by delivering maybe more in-depth content that I can't really do on YouTube. Because now I know that the person is committed, so I can go a little bit further. And then when I have more substantial products that are not uh, suitable for YouTube, because YouTube is really, you know, five-minute videos. If I have a big course, say uh, a six-hour big in-depth course on, you know, economy picking, mm -hmm. that's where I make my money. So I will sell that product. And... That product is sold to my email list. People who are on the list who are already showing interest towards pursuing that education a little bit more. So in a nutshell, that's how it works. That's how I make money. And I would say that really probably 90% of the income comes from those courses. And then there's a little bit of advertisement revenue on YouTube, but mostly I'm a guitar teacher and I sell my guitar courses. So your, your YouTube videos are 
opening the door, but with the, the lock on it. And then to open that lock, it's you know, email address and... Kind of, uh, except that when, when you say like a lock, someone could very well um, learn pretty much everything on YouTube sure. for free from me. Okay. But there's no method. Like you'll have a, one video on scales, one video on, on theory. And so really what I sell is a shortcut to really have specific step-by-step curriculum-like education with feedback. And that's really what people pay. They, they, they pay for the shortcut of not having to browse through tons okay, of so videos. The, the, the pay, paywall is for the structure rather than the content itself. And yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. You said your videos are only like around five minutes long. Is that, is that something you would like, is that a David Wallerman thing or is it something you would recommend? Yeah, so that's, a, that's the evolving part of the, of the job that always changes. When I started <clears throat> about 10 years ago, the videos were about five minutes. Um, they're actually more funny entertainment type things, but they were about five minutes. And at the time, because in order to grow on YouTube, you want YouTube to do the work for you. Uh, you want YouTube to promote your content on the homepage and all of that. And I'm just learning this. I don't want to appear like an expert. I'm really learning all this now. But at the time, um, the algorithm of YouTube would take things like likes, views. Really, I think those were the main ones. So if a video got 10,000 views within the first 24 hours, YouTube thought, oh, that's, that's a good video. We're going to share it around. So it is kind of easy to grow at the time. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of abuse too because, oh, yeah. you know, you could send it to the masses. And so then um, I think YouTube went to watch time. So if someone watches, if you have a 10 minute video, someone watches 70% of that video, that's considered good. Now, nobody knows really what the algorithm is. There's so many steps. And I think I heard that it's actually, there's a lot of, uh, a lot more focused on um, artificial intelligence. So it's almost like growing, even the engineers might not know where it is exactly. But there are a lot of factors, including now uh, viewer satisfaction, like how does that video make the viewer feel? Is he happy? Then that's a good video. But how how do, do they, they measure that? that? Yeah. Good question. <laughs> I don't know. I know that there are surveys sometimes on videos. How did that made you, video make you feel? But there, I, I, there are thousands of tiny little things that YouTube looks at to gauge if this channel should be pushed or not. Long story short, um, in the last, I don't know, six, seven years, my videos were longer because at the time the watch time was important. So I made longer videos and, um, now things are changing a little bit. I think my understanding is that now session time is very important. If I click on your, I see one of your YouTube videos on Facebook, for example, I click on it, uh, and I watch that video followed by another one, another one, and I end up spending two hours on YouTube. Even if within those two hours, not all the videos were yours, but if you brought me to Facebook, you're going to be rewarded by that, mm. by the algorithm. And so all that to say that the strategy has been changing for my channel. It's very recent. I started doing that a month ago where the, there's faster cuts and shorter videos, um, my intros used to be at least three or four minutes. Now I try to get into the main content like right away. I don't even introduce myself anymore. And so within, I try within 20 seconds to get into the content right away. Right. It's too early to say if it's gonna be good or not. To answer your question, is the five minute thing a David Wallerman thing? Uh, not really, it's, it's just looking at the stats, the audience retention. Because YouTube will, will tell you, and I'm not telling you, Andy, I'm telling the viewers, you can look at a video and see when someone uh, skipped ahead or rewinded it, rewatched the part and all that. So it's making decisions according to that. And you can do the same with thumbnails. By the way, <laughs> there are a few people who told me, your thumbnails are stupid. Yes, they are stupid. <laughs> but the algorithm tells me that you keep clicking on them. <laughs> I get so the same all... thing, man. I get this. <laughs> Why don't you close your mouth in your thumbnails? Yeah. I get that. Okay. If that means so much to you. 
<laughs> but I think, I think uh, people need to realize that a lot of this YouTube game, if you take it seriously, is actually very analytical and not just random. There's a lot you can really look at things that trigger decisions. And the decisions that we might make on the channel really are directed by the viewers. So that was a long answer, but that's kind there of was a I'm lot of information right in that answer. That was <laughs> that was really good. Um, one of the latest things I've learned from you know the myth that is the YouTube algorithm is that um, if you upload the video as you would normally, but put it to private, but then release the video from the app on your mobile phone, it gets sent to more of your subscribers. Oh, I that's have very interesting. I have no basis of truth on that. But it's, again, an experiment that I've been doing recently. And statistics would show that more people are watching that in the first 24 hours. Very interesting. So you're but, talking about the phone app, the creator app yeah, on the, the phone? Yeah, the YouTube studio, I think it's called. OK, OK. Um, so yeah, I upload the video. It's set to private. Even if I'm going to do it straight away, then I'll go to the phone and go, OK, public, save. Been doing it for about a month. Things have changed. Numbers have changed. Very interesting. But I guess the th thing I want to go into next is that you can get bogged down in statistics and numbers. And specifically for someone who's starting out with YouTube, it's a big world to jump into. And I don't know, and still being a fairly young channel myself, I don't know if I would start now. It, it just seems so overwhel overwhelming. You mean start, uh, start a YouTube Start career, a YouTube channel. Or... Yeah. OK. Uh, it, it just seems. It just seems so overwhelming, so overbearing. And to take all these facts and things in, I think the biggest thing you said today is from Rob Chapman is to, to be yourself and, and be you, because no one else can. I think so. I, I think it goes back to that. And I, I think every creator, at some point or another, will feel the, the heaviness of the numbers and the stats and comparing. Um, and I've struggled with that on and off. And last. I think it was last September, that was the heaviest it hit me because I would see all these uh, creators grow way faster than me. And that's where, like, I'm gonna be totally honest, but that's where, like, bad things come out of you, like jealousy and it, yeah. it's horrible. It's horrible. Why, I, is, I, why is he getting that? Why am I not getting that? I'm, I'm, am I as good as him? Is, is he, you know, what do people want? What do you want? Yeah, I know. I feel it, man. I feel it. I'm, I've been through the it, same thing. It's, it can be really difficult, but what I, I'm, I'm much better now and I had to take like really drastic uh, decisions. It's almost like quitting smoking or drinking or whatever. So I had to stop looking at stats, not only YouTube stats, but my sales stats and all of that. And just because it was affecting my family too, my family time, I was thinking work all the time, yeah. checking my phone all the time. I still struggle with that and it's, yeah. It can be difficult, but I would say to someone who's wanting to start, um, don't worry about the numbers, just w focus on uh, the friendships that you might make, even it's a, though it's a weird friendship because you don't, you, know, you don't see the person, but talk to people like your, their friends, it'll teach you about uh, so many things, production, um, public speaking, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it can be very, very fun. Just don't let the numbers get you down. Well, it seems like you're still having fun, even after 10, 11 years. And yeah. Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. Um, but it, it goes in peaks. Like, there are some times where I, it's a drag to make a video. Yeah. Um, I think it's normal. It's still a job. But overall, I love, I love what I do. And do you still love playing guitar? Yeah, that's, that never left. I've always loved playing guitar. What's the way that you're offering courses now? What's the latest you've got on offer? And what does the world need from David Wallerman right now? <laughs> so two, big, two, two things, really. Uh, the, the latest is a course on practice that came out recently, where basically it teaches students how to set up their own practice plan. So that's the latest. Um, but. There is a, a big project that's not out yet, but I'm working on that. The, the flagship course that I have is called Guitar Infusion, and it's a, kind of a theory improvisation course. It's a big course, and I'm in the process of redoing it completely. 
uh, take, having taken the, the feedback from students where it's going to be a lot more interactive with weekly calls. It's going to be short, uh, small groups of maybe 15 students where it'll, we'll meet weekly and assignments and things like that. So that's in the works. Cool. Today. And how often do you update your courses? Like some people will release a course and then not release anything for a year. But you seem to be constantly flowing with new courses. Is that a, is that a, a key thing to your business model? Uh, I, I think uh, yes and no. So some of the courses that you've seen, they may have been older courses. But the way that I do uh, my launches for big courses is that they're limited time launches. So people can grab it during two weeks and then enrollment closes. And I really do that for a couple things. From a purely business perspective, that's what works. That's the only way I can make a, a living. Completely honestly, that's why, from a business perspective. Because prior to that, the courses could be bought anytime, mm -hmm. no sales. And then I, I restricted that to two weeks, maybe every six months or something like that. Mm -hmm. And big difference. But the second, uh, the second important reason is that with the courses, usually when someone purchases the courses, it might take them, I'll just make, a, make up a number, maybe a month to go through the content. Well, I like to have students go through the courses in batch at the same time or less, because then I can offer support to those students. And, you know, if I, if I did it, if I had a course going on like all the time, I will... I might forget about a section of the course. Like maybe in chapter two, people ask this question, I will always have to go back and my answer wouldn't be very good. Whereas if people go through the course at the same time, then I kind of know that, okay, this is week two, even though they, they have lifetime access, it's on their own pace. But usually if they follow the guide, week two, I'm gonna get a bunch of questions. I might get a bunch of questions on this chapter and now I'm really focused on that with my support. So it's better for the students too. So there's really two, two reasons, a biz, purely business reason, but also for the student, it's much better to do it that way for me. Um, super, super interesting. So yeah, to answer your question, you said uh, you seem to release a lot of courses. Not necessarily, not as much as you might think, but I do launches. So a course, a big course might be launched twice a year or two or three times a year. Okay. And those launches happen to the email list that we talked about previously. But I have upped my, my course creation in the last couple of years, and I've been doing more co-teaching courses. So uh, the last one, well, actually, the, there's a project right now. We're working on it with uh, Steve Stein. Um, we're doing a, a guitar a boot camp uh, CrossFit type thing. So exercises, workouts, and stuff like that. So we're working on that. And Steve actually was supposed to fly here to Colorado a few weeks ago, but uh, it's right now as I'm filming this, it's the lockdown time. So <laughs> flights were canceled, but it will happen at some point. <laughs> cool. And just to talk about the lockdown briefly, what has that like, affected positively, negatively what you're doing? You've got more students um, or...? The that's a great question. It hasn't really affected my job much because I well I, I you know self employed thing I don't see people. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube can be a very lonely job, by the way, people. So you need to know if you're an introvert, that's great. <laughs> um, uh, it it affected it in the way that I I shifted focus a little bit. I don't know if it's. Um, it was just my decision. I knew that a lot of people would be at home during this time. And I also knew that there was the possibility of people not really wanting to spend money on guitar courses. So my focus has shifted on providing free content, but better than the YouTube stuff. Not that the YouTube stuff, I don't, I don't think it's bad, but like more substantial and focusing right. on, on collecting emails that way. So, for example, I, I offered some free courses and promoted those. Um, so the, the focus has been more on delivering free content, not only for emails, but also to uh, strengthen the, the relationship that I might have with some viewers and go a little bit further for free. 
So the focus has changed a little bit like that. That's interesting. It's been and good. Something you, you touched on that I'd like to sort of round off this conversation with, if I may, is as a YouTuber, as a guitar player musician, um, about the mental health of doing what you do. Because it's a, doing what I do, and it's pretty much the same thing. We sit in a room and we make videos talking to an imaginary person behind a camera. Yeah. Um, how, how do you deal? What, what's your re regime for staying sane and staying happy and friendly? Oh, gosh, that's, that's a very good question. Um, I still like people, so that's good. <laughs> um, I don't know that I have secrets, but I do have uh, an anecdote, which is kind of interesting. It's not so much the case now, but it happened a few years ago where I, I was very socially awkward extremely and i it's because i was only doing videos and i found i discovered that the only time i could really freely talk was when there was a camera which usually is the opposite yeah. when people are not used to it yeah and I, I i knew that because i think it was the first GitCon, so probably three years ago and i was thrown into this room with all these youtubers and it was so difficult for me to have this yeah to be not alone anymore. And, I, and we had to do videos together in a room. And as soon as the video was on, I was on. And then as soon as it was off, I, I feel that I, I appeared like this arrogant, horrible, antisocial guy. And <laughs> I was just <laughs> not used to, I don't know. It's, it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing. Things are better now. But <laughs> so if someone sees me in the street and strikes a conversation and I appear to be Strange. It's not because I don't like you. It's because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not used to talking one on one to people other than my wife and my kids. <laughs> it is funny just to to jump into that anecdote. Anecdote when you see a when you jump into a room full of YouTubers, and you expect there to be all this. Hey, whoa, wow, amazing! Come on, and it's just yeah. a room full of, of quiet people. And then someone turns a camera on, and it's not because people are arrogant. It's because we feel comfortable like that. That's so true, yeah. Uh, and you're just saving true. energy when you're not, because it's a high-energy job, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's funny. It's, it's, it's nice to hear that from, from someone like yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I did say that was like my final question, but I do actually have something else, and that was you're constantly evolving, and you're looking at your, your stats and your income and your figures and your views and all that, and then you're changing and improving. Is there anything that you would go back to yourself 10 years ago when I was actually watching you 10 years ago and you had this little tiny desk and you were doing yeah, video reviews as yeah. well? What would, advice would you give that David Wanman from that, from that era? The first thing that comes to mind, and that's just because we were talking about business and making a living, is start collecting emails right away. Mm -hmm. um, besides that, from a creative perspective and all that, I probably wouldn't change much because I learned a lot and it was fun and it, it still is. So I don't have any regrets really. I did a lot of mistakes, but but I don't regret them. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I Just enjoy the ride and know, don't worry too much about things. Try not to. Things will be okay. That's what I would tell myself. Even if they're not, they will be in the end. It's okay. <laughs> Awesome. So you can back to the future yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, David, it's been wonderful talking to you. I really, really appreciate your time. And Same here. Thank you. For the Andy. people watching this, I, I guarantee you have learned something at this point because I know I have and I've had a joy time doing it. Um, Thank you. I'm going to put links and stuff below this video for David, but what's the best way to find content from you, David? Uh, probably YouTube is the best way to know about what I do. And that's just my last name, Wallaman, two L's, two N's. So youtube.com slash Wallaman, two L's, two N's. A big thanks to David for sharing his story with us. And there's lots to think about there. And I hope this inspires you and helps you on your guitar journey. There are plenty more in this series, or there will be soon. So don't forget to subscribe and enable the notifications bell so you don't miss any of that sweet, sweet money-making information. Also on the screen is the Making Money with Guitars playlist. And something underneath it just there, that's what YouTube has recommended for you. So go click one of those, and I will see you over there. Cheers!